What's up, everybody? This is DTN Delta Tango Mike welcoming you into the most amazing Behance Live art battle show you're ever going to find. This is DTM Versus. I am DTM Delta Tango Mike. Welcome to our studio. Welcome to the show. Please let me know what the audio sounds like. Everything is okay on my side. We have an amazing, super talented guest today. And uh, man, it's a, it was a hard drawing to work on. And you're going to see some of our process today. So uh, get ready for that. Big ups to everybody who's hanging out in the chat already. You guys are the real MVPs out here. Wait, a cuff in the house, hand holding it down. What's up, Wade? Thank you for being here. On YouTube, we got some folks hanging out. Christopher and Rup Prod Games. Welcome, welcome. On the Behance, let me look over here. Of course, Umacorn in the house. How you doing, Umacorn? Jack Watson. Welcome, welcome. And uh, Annika. Oh, my gosh. Annika is here. Oliver, how you doing? Audio good here. Thank you, Oliver. I appreciate that. Um, Yes, I was watching the live stream earlier from um, before us uh, going in with a pen tool. And it's like, yes, that's the stuff I like. And I saw all your names there. So I know you're there. Clever De clever Devlin says art, 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 art. That's right. PJ, how you doing? Lewis, welcome. Welcome, Peg. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and bring in our guest and uh, say hello to our amazing guest. Her name is Shannon Ananda, the Ananda Mama. How you doing? <laughs> not too bad not too bad just enjoying enjoying ourselves today ready for another art battle uh tell us tell us a little bit about you tell us your name and where you're from nice and uh what was it that attracted you to art what was it that inspired you to start drawing Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. Well, that's great. And thank you for being here with us today. Uh, you say we can't hear Shannon? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me see. All right, there we go. Uh, thank you, everybody. All right, tell us your name, <laughs> where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Shannon. <laughs> There it is. And I am from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. There you go. All right. So now we can hear you. Thank you, everybody, for uh, – see, this is it's live. It happens on, on the Internet at, at, right on, at the same time as it happens here. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it happens like that. That's good. Thank you, everybody, for letting us know about the audio. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Gareth, in the house. Louis, uh, thank you all for being here. Take two. That's right, Wade says. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All good. Sometimes the shark. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so let's ask a different question. Tell us about the theme. Where did the idea for the today's theme uh, and um, concept come from? Where? How do you get that inspiration? Um, I was just thinking about um, things that make me feel powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, something that I wanted to portray. So we decided on Black Power. Um, Black Power, it's ironically enough, you know, Juneteenth month, Juneteenth month and all of that. Mm. So I thought it was just a good time um, to dive back into history, kind of connect with whatever is in um, your history, my history, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just um, bring it to a platform. Right. Do you find uh, that you have in your art... Uh, the theme of black history running through it, or is that something you're exploring now? I feel like a lot of my pieces, since they are either exactly like of someone's face, mm -hmm. then like they are closely related or like hitting on the edge of it. So I mm -hmm. feel like even in my pieces, even though obviously these are fictional characters, a lot of the facial structures are of um, African-American people. 
like with big eyes, big nose, big lips, mm -hmm. um, our skin tones, and even taking it further back, like when we were giants and mm -hmm. perhaps maybe even coming in different shades of brown and darker and lighter mm -hmm. and just taking it there. Mm -hmm. um, I have been exploring more with realism lately, though, so just working more closely with it and making it clearly translatable so anybody that sees it can know, okay, this is obviously somebody African-American, you know. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Yes, the representation. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a big a big deal. I was watching uh, some kind of show. I think it was the Baby Jedi a Star Wars uh, show on Disney. And they had these little Jedi guys. And one of them, uh, this little girl, had the Afro puffs all over her head. And my granddaughter, she's three years old. She, she started touching her head and saying, that's me. That's me. You know, uh, man, that just filled my heart was like, I'm glad she can see herself in the world. You know, mm -hmm. she feels like she's part of the world, like she belongs. So that's totally. super awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's go into the drawing part. I'm going to go ahead and share our screens. Let me see. Let me see. It is uh, our progress. There we go. That is where we share our art. We can see both of our screens. I'm going to open. Uh, I need to open my sketch. Oh, my gosh. We're working in Adobe Fresco. Big ups to everybody who's hanging out with us today. And uh, let me, oh, no, you guys should not see that. There you go. Look, see, I can, <laughs> I can change it. <laughs> oh, here we go. This was my original sketch. I have a lot of ideas. Tell us about uh, what, how did you get to the sketch? What was the inspiration? What did you look for inspiration? What does it mean to you? Um, so I knew I wanted to portray women, um, like in African culture. Mm -hmm. And when it actually turned into like a big research project um, on the low, because I learned a lot about um, the tribe that I'm actually presenting is of the Mercy tribe in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And um, there they wear lip plates, women, they cut their lips, like I guess like under here to begin to stretch them, starting with like smaller plates at first, but um they wear the lip plates like when they get their cycle, when it's mm -hmm. time to find a husband. And it's like the bigger the plate, it's it's a symbol of beauty, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And with that, I think that's that alone is powerful because like when would you ever see someone on the street mm -hmm. like that today? Mm -hmm. And even fun fun fact. Okay. Um, I learned that even today when these women have it in the in the tribes. Not only is it a sign for beauty and like um, finding a male, they only ever wear them when it's time to be around men mm. um, in, in only those settings. And those women are usually chiefs. So I just oh. thought that that was extremely powerful. Nice. Okay. Okay. Yes. A history lesson. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a history lesson and passion in this artwork. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for that answer. That's great. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and start with our artwork. Let me see. There we go. Boom. Uh, what are some of the first steps that you take uh, when uh, starting from a sketch? Uh, it looks like two sketches are in there, like a very rough and then a, a cleaner where you kind of cleaned up the mm -hmm. neck and started working on the face. Uh, yeah. Is that your process? That is my process. Sometimes I just play around with the pencil and just start scribbling and see if I even feel anything from it so far. But for this in particular, I had to make a clear focus like with the eyes. I tried to make it like a clear vision and not so make believe, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I had to take it back to um, an art class perspective, I guess, you know, when they're having you draw the circle out and then put the line down the middle and <laughs> put the line in the middle right there. And uh -huh. then you get the hang of where you want the focus of the eyes to be and uh -huh. where to put the shadows and the light and all that stuff. Yes, so yeah, yes. that was that was the starting point of it. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, I always like to go over lots of layers to sketch. Here's an example of uh, me working on the the character, the main character. Uh, when you said black power, I was like, yes, but how do I realize that in an image? What do I do about a drawing? So I started with a quick sketch here on the right hand side. And that's like a rough just to get the idea out. It may not even be what I'm going to keep, but you got to just dump it out your head for a second you know dump it out your head and then take a look at what to change and here's something that i always say to artists is that you don't know what to change your drawing until you have a drawing 
Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get stuck on. Uh, oops, there we go. Don't get stuck on uh, on having. There we go. Don't get stuck on how we're going to um, work on the artwork when uh, you don't have a drawing yet. You know, so don't get stuck. Start on with something. Make something happen. And so here's what uh, what I started to do. Uh, I talked it over with my wife. My wife says, no, I don't like it. And so if my wife says no, then I have to agree with her. Uh, let me see. Where did I do? I had a full color version of this. And I don't know what happened to it. It's in here somewhere. I uh, don't see those layers now. And uh, that's because as time goes on, I work on more and more layers. Clean it up. Clean it up. And I think it's, uh, this is, uh, oh yeah. And I started to draw in, um, Hey, rule the hawk. I was like, I need to have a God in here. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to have a God. Uh, so eventually I decided on a new drawing and a new sketch and I kept the tree. I liked the tree. So I was going to keep the tree and let me see. There's, there's that. Get rid of that. Let's turn that off. Turn that off. And then turn on the other parts that I did one uh, in the new drawing. Let's see. Here we go. The tree. There goes the sunburst. I wanted the sun behind the the onk. But this onk is a particular onk that you'll find when you look up the god Ta. P-T-A-H. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is the god of art. The, the Egyptian god of art. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so I wanted to bring him on, but I already wanted, I, I liked um, Hey Ru the Hawks. So I said, nah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, bring in uh, just the uncle. So here's here she is. Here she is. This is what I started to draw, but my wife uh, downvoted it. She says, no. And there's a lot of things that I like and a lot of things I don't like about this drawing. So I was like, fine, fine. I'll do it again. I'll draw it again. And one thing about drawings and art, I feel that we have um, lots of inspiration and um, and and some kind of like a connection to the source. That if one thing doesn't work, ah, let's try something else. Let's do it again. You know. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Did you find yourself um, looking up references and getting stuck on something? I did. I looked up a lot of different references actually, just so I could. Um put put a picture to like what it was I was trying to envision mm -hmm. before I actually put in the research behind it. Um, I researched lip plates just to see what would come up mm -hmm. and what um, what these people would look like, you know, while wearing them, because it's a very ceremonial thing. Like mm -hmm. they don't it's not very much an everyday occasion where you'll just see them wearing the lip plates. Usually it'll just be out and then like, you know, they have the big, long <laughs> drooping lip. Yep. But mm -hmm. um, even still, yes, I did um, get some references. How would I be able to show that? Just go. Just yeah, go you, can, you can go through your iPad if you have them in there. And then, yeah, uh, I uh -huh. sure do. Mm -hmm. um, or my photos like here. Is it an open? Sorry, y'all. Mm -hmm. I am new to Fresco. That's all right. That's good. That's good. Because we're going to ask you some Fresco questions, too. Yes. Let's see. I am turning on some of these layers so that I can Definitely share them. Time. Boom. Boom. Oh, maybe I should add a layer first. Doi. Oh, to bring him in? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. I, I don't think it needs a layer to bring. It, it creates its own layer, I think. But let's see. What happened? Nothing happened? It didn't come mm -mm. in? You think I should just go to my photos? Sure, sure. You can just uh, switch yeah. the app to your photos. Pretty yeah. Cool. So okay. like this is this is an example mm -hmm. um, of one picture that I found, which was really the um, one of the only references I did use. And then um, like even this one. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You got You know. So how do you feel about references? Is that something that you're used to doing to make sure you find um, something that that uh, looks like what it's supposed to look like? Because you also do tattoos. Yes, I value references and I only value references if you plan on making your own spin on it. You know, it's a thin line between referencing something and then just copying it. So if you're if you're going to reference like I only reference when um 
is literally something I've never seen before. Or like maybe if I'm trying um, a new pose or something like that, mm -hmm. then I'll reference because like, for example, I, I was just telling you, I'm not very good with anatomy of the body parts, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. drawing body parts and stuff like that. So maybe like I'll go to Pinterest and look up a sp specific pose and work with it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. yeah, referencing, I'm not against it. I'm not against it because even with tattooing, a lot of that work is just tracing. Most of it is tracing. <laughs> right. But but you need to start with a good drawing, right? Because once mm -hmm. you're tracing it on the skin, it's not coming off. <laughs> no eraser. Yeah, it's not coming off. No erasers. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and take us through your process. Move on to the next step on your drawing. I'm working on my drawing now. I got Hey Rule the Hawk. One of the things that I wanted to do with this particular drawing is to not have many lines to make up the shape of the figure of the anatomy. And uh, and so, as you can see, I got some colors here. Let's get this gold. I have a clean layer. This is a layer I just created. I'm using my vector brush. And, uh, and just like that, I'm going to draw. There you go, like this. Some of the bits that deal with the headdress and here we go so just make a nice little outline there and I am on a higher layer than my black outline that's here and I can always switch it down below like this boom get my uh, uh, bucket what are some of the things that you when you were doing your work uh, with Adobe Fresco that uh, proved to be a challenge for you that you were like, mm, I wish fresco, etc. Um, well, for one, I when I would work with like really colorful pieces, um, like in Procreate, for example, I would be able to use the color wheel and then it would have a place where I can find um, a complementary color, split complementary color, mm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a bit of a challenge because that would be usually how I would create the um, the concepts or the color concept, at mm -hmm. least the palette behind it all. So I think now it's just a bit of a challenge because, OK, now I'm going to have to just take it back to um, when I was in high school, taking an art class, <laughs> like using the color wheel literally in different angles to uh -huh. find like the complementary color of this color right here will be somewhere down here in the blues, you know? Uh -huh. So that alone was a bit of a challenge and it took some time um, for me to figure out just what I wanted to do with it. And that was one thing I wish that they had a split complementary yeah. <laughs> color wheel. That they already had a palette that was there for you. You know, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, so here goes a tip. This is here goes a tip for you and everybody else. Okay, right, show right. me. So I, 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 I brought in a, a picture into Fresco, and your process was right. I think there was a step that you were missing when you were bringing, trying to import an, uh, a, uh, a reference image. So let me go ahead and switch to my screen. Uh, okay. the, yeah, the left hand side, you click on the pictures and you look for your photos and so on, right? And mm -hmm. so you select the photo you want to bring in. And it just and it shows up in there, and you click done. As soon as you click done, there's a little notification that just showed up. It said color palette created, and when you open your colors, hmm. on that on that color uh, colors um, uh, tab uh, the circle, you get the whole window to show up, and now you have a color palette that's been created because uh, that features all the artwork, uh, all the colors from that artwork that you just brought in. So that is Ta, and so there is uh, the color palette for him right here. This is the color palette. When I brought in this image here, I like this image. I like the art style. I love the color palette. So I said, you know what? I'm going to bring in that picture so that I have that color palette uh, for me to play with, and that's this uh, second to last color palette. So uh, sometimes uh, you'll find a combination of colors you really like, and like, oh, I'm going to use that. And, uh, and so you can bring it into Fresco and bam, there it is. Sweet. Thanks for that. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Maggie Covina on, uh, on uh, Behance is uh, cheering you on. Says go Shannon. Oh no. Count says, you. come on Shannon. Yeah. Come on Shannon. <laughs> and it says, uh, Shannon is so talented and skillful, amazing and talented. <laughs> hey, thank you, Maggie. Hey. Appreciate that. Uh, Sierra says, go, Shannon, go, Shannon, go, Shannon, go. Um, 
Yes, Melissa says, uh, very helpful for color palette imports. Yeah, so that's super great uh, process for having the color palette that you want. You know, after a while, it's kind of hard to keep track of everything. There's a lot of stuff going on in mm -hmm. your drawing. All right, let's see what's the progress over here. So you're working on uh, some uh, inking mm -hmm. of your piece. And uh, nice. It just, looks... Just closing up these lines so I can do the drop. That's like the easiest um, mm -hmm. way for me, usually like that. And then I'll go in and I'll just um, go over the parts where it's like kind of white around the edges and stuff. I'll take a darker color um, that's not going to be like my base color. So probably a shade darker than this brown to make like the contours of it all, mm -hmm. the shadows. And then I'll just blend that out. Okay. Okay. So, so you want a solid. Yeah. Because like scribbling it in. That's what I was telling you earlier. Procreate and just any graphic design um, app has gotten me so, 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 so lazy. Because you cannot do this on a canvas. Right. You can. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we were talking about uh, digital and traditional media earlier behind the scenes. And, uh, and man... I want to get better at watercolors and learn oils and stuff. But when you have an app like uh, Adobe Fresco, you have all of that in the iPad right here at your fingertips. You don't need to carry a lot of art materials. You don't need um, a lot of sketchbooks and paper. All of that is not necessary once you have an app that can handle a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. I do like Adobe Fresco, though. Now that I've tried it, because this is my first time trying it, um, I do like it so far. It's not very different from Procreate, mm -hmm. but um, it's also some some big differences that I, took me some time to get used to. Right, right, right. Yes, and that's how it is uh, with any medium. I think that you go from pencils to inks to markers to brushes. It's uh, mm -hmm. it, it, you always have a uh, learning curve. Peg says I have used the color palettes. That's good, Peg. Uh, another helpful hint for the color palettes is to use uh, the full app, uh, number of ads, apps by Adobe. One of them is uh, ah, I forgot the name, but you can keep track of your color, uh, the color palettes. You can create color palettes and save it to your libraries, and so then when you're using Photoshop, Illustrator. Or fresco, you can bring those color palettes out and uh, and use it in your artwork. So it's really cool. Uh, Maggie says, "I know someone who looks like this." <laughs> <laughs> and and Peg says, uh, "Maggie, like the drawing? Yikes! Oh, <laughs> the, yeah, the, these are these um these are images of living things. So it could right. be it could be true." It could be true. So, hey, Rue the Hawk has uh, gold sandals. So I'm going to draw my sandals here. Boom. There you go. Can I draw it? Yes, I can. Oh, yes. There we go. So I'm just using the um, uh, vector brush. Which brushes are you using right now? Vector or pixel? Oh, I see. You um, just, you yeah, know? right now this is the Blur. smudge brush. Yeah. yeah so this is graphite but uh -huh. to do the um the actual line of it all what was that it was the first tab is pixels second Belgian tab... comics okay okay yeah. yeah and i do like that one that one um was closest to um like a just a thick clear marker like without any of the streak marks or anything like that mm -hmm. so um i found that working with that was just really um simple for me because yeah my work the lines are usually pretty bold at first and then i'll just smudge them out like based on the amount of definition that it needs you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. so how did you learn painting what was your painting experience when did you start um i started painting hmm i started painting really when i was a child but i started um really leaning towards it my senior year in high school 
And um, that was when I really started to just get more consistent and even like go to the art store and try out new supplies. And it just became more exciting for me um, in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it was just a natural thing, progression. Did it have anything to do with your dad, who's an artist? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> had every every single thing to do with it <laughs> had every single thing to do with it um mm -hmm. just just seeing like how talented my dad was it just inspired me to try um and see like what i could do you know mm -hmm. and um even though like my dad my dad is taking it all the way there like he has a comic book he's a retired tattoo artist now but um i was still kind of figuring out like where i wanted to take visual art as a whole you know um but as far as painting goes yeah i've been painting for in years i don't even think about the years i don't feel like doing math right now I'm mm -hmm. trying to draw. <laughs> but yeah i would say i would say in high school is when i started taking it really serious and then um when i got out of high school i took some time to learn about um color therapy mm-hmm which oh. helps me pick a lot of colors like in the palettes that I choose. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So you started to understand the the um the emotions and feelings behind color. Mhm. Mm yeah, and just learning how to to create emotions oh, from know. the colors that I choose. Uh-huh. You know. Uh-huh. Good. Good. Okay. Cool. Cool. I'm trying to uh, work on my drawing here. There was a setting for uh, the transparency lock, and I can't remember. This is oh, there it is, right there. So let me look right here. Lock transparency. So uh, Vector does not have the lock transparency set as reference. I'm looking at my settings here. Anybody out there watching this and uh, working with Fresco? That's crazy. I remember there was the lock transparency available. Um, let's see. That's not working. Oh, I'm in the wrong layer. There it is. Let me see. Lock transparency is still not working. Why is that? Something. Oh, you see? Something is up with. Uh, there we go. Oh, I see. Go there and then go here. There it is. So it's working. Lock transparency is working for pixel layers but it's not working for vector layers huh little it's throwing a little wrench in here maybe my memory is bad um yeah you know i work with uh fresco illustrator photoshop and so some apps have some options other apps don't and uh so it's really easy to get lost get lost in the sauce and uh it said capture keeps the inspiration going even when i am not at my computer Yes, I guess that's it. Adobe Capture, right, Joshua? That's good. Yes, yes. Uh, I love the patterns in Capture. Yes, there we go. I like making patterns from plants and flowers with Capture when I'm out. Oliver. So Oliver and Peg says Capture is a trip. So Adobe Capture is the app. And so I think it's free. I think it's free to use Adobe Capture. And you can uh, keep tra uh, take pictures of uh, flowers, signs, whatever you want. And it will um, uh, save those colors as a, as a palette, and you can then use it in your drawings. Oh, cool. Yeah, so Adobe Capture, look into that. Boom. There you go. All right. There we go. I'm getting my, my uh, lines in here. And what I wanted to do with this drawing, I didn't want to have any, any outlines. I do have an outline for the head, and it's okay. Now, uh, let's see. Robzilla in the house with Capture is dope. Create libraries all day. There you go. Fresco's getting additions, I've heard. Thanks, uh, Peg, and thanks, uh, Robzilla. Ray Band says, go, Shay, go. Go, <laughs> Shay, Shay, yes. Awesome. And Melissa does say the psychology of color is real. It's real. Color, it's real. Yeah. Color and color will affect your mood. Mm-hmm. So what are your favorite colors? My favorite colors are um, orange and green. Okay. 
orange and green and what they what they what they make you feel how you feel about them what is it um orange just makes me feel really warm and like light um and then green just reminds me of nature just not any not any old green though like jade green <laughs> is like my favorite i'd uh-huh. be specific uh-huh. and same thing with orange really i like like burnt orange like the really really warm orange like a sunset all right yes what yeah. are your favorite colors uh you know you made me think of the sunset i like sunsets hmm. <laughs> but i never thought of orange like that that's great you're right you're right um my favorite is blue blue is my favorite color there is no other nothing oh, else will do yeah and i didn't really know about the what the feeling i get or anything is more I don't know. I don't know. Growing up, like I, I, I can hear it in my head. Baby blue, baby blue, and that blue, just the blue in general. And I do like the ocean. So when you're out at the at the beach, you know, you see all that blue out there. You see the blue skies. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can get comfortable here. That's why I like blue. Yeah, blues. I like blues too. I like like really pastel colors a lot, which mm. is kind of weird because like I kind of hate the favorite color question because I love all types of colors. <laughs> right, right, right. Then don't don't make me pick one. Yeah, Please don't make me pick one. Right, right. You ask my grandson what's his favorite color. He tells you all of them, num- all the colors. He picks them all. He's like all of them. Like all right, cool. Another layer for this one. So what are we doing now? We we did some color shape. Okay, so you're doing all the colors and blending in one layer. Mm-hmm. That's how you like it. Yeah, as far as like the layers, I'm still trying to learn like the discipline behind it because mm-hmm. I have um not made layers before in pieces and I found that it did really hurt me like when it was time to blend and stuff. Mm. It's like, dang, maybe I should have made a layer so, you know, this could stay still. But um I'm still kind of learning on where to put them, even in Procreate, not just um in Adobe. But um I feel like as long as um everything looks smooth I can kind of get away with it, mm-hmm. but I will, I'll usually make different layers when it's time to like blend just so like the harsh lines that I make mm. stay still, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And you're doing, uh, and so one of the keys for me is like using a lot of layers. Cause let's mm-hmm. say, let's say, uh, for a second that you decide that you want to change them out. Right. Well, now you have that red inside of, um, inside of that brown and so if you want to change you have to go in and color again you know mm-hmm. uh, and so sometimes let's say if you didn't want it red and you want it orange you can just um go to that layer and just change that color in that layer and draw over it uh over that red with the orange and now you have changed the color without affecting the rest of the drawing so it depends on you know how much freedom do you want later to uh change things and adjust things yeah because like even now i'm seeing i probably should have made a layer sooner (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's real it's real and like right now i'm about to draw this orange line under the red and it's real easy to do because there's uh this the orange is in a different layer the Mm -hmm. red is in a higher layer the yellow is in a lower layer so then i can play around with all the yeah. different colors and cross them over or under each other. Yeah. yeah. And I'll work with layers a lot too, when I'm trying to like um, decide on like a background color, you know, like I'll go to like the very first layer, like mm-hmm. before, before my sketch and everything, I'll go to the very first one and then just decide on um, which background I want. Of course, after I finish like all the other layers on top of it, but um, that's when I'll decide like a background color. Right. So yeah, that's how um, there's a an artist that we know. His name is Orlando Arocena. One of his interviews and some of his uh, streams where he shares his process, he said in the past, he said, layers are free. So I'm like, yeah, you're right. Use as many layers as you want. They're free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's right. Uh, uh, Robzilla says layers are insurance. That's right. You can turn them 
off and on. And that's correct, Rob. It's Mexi Funk. Find Mexi Funk on the internet. He is an amazing illustrator. Big ups to people still watching on Adobe Live. Thank you for uh, joining us on Adobe Live with um, uh, on uh, on the YouTube channel on Adobe Live. Welcome. Make sure you like the uh, the video and uh, subscribe to Adobe Live on YouTube. Uh, and then uh, Fresco lets you drag the layers too, so you can change what's on top. Correct, Peg. That's right. You can change the order of the layers. Uh, thank you for the links, uh, Wade, uh, Shannon, Ananda. So you can find her on Instagram, the Ananda Mama. And uh, this, we have a question. What tip would you give to someone who wants to start drawing and painting? I mean, it depends on what you want to draw and paint. Uh, right. But yeah, because. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure there's lots of ways to start. Um, it, it, we'll ask uh, Shannon to give us uh, an answer to that, and then I can jump in with, with uh, adding to that answer. Shannon, what, what would you do? What do you need to do? What kind of tips would you give someone who wants to start drawing and painting? Um, well, first I would say to just start. You know, um, perfection is way less important than just, like, starting it. So, um, like, as you take the time to really, you know, um, water the craft and decide on what it is you want to do and remain, um, what is it, consistent mm -hmm. with whatever it is you want to start creating to just do it. Because, yeah, if you never start, then you're just not going to have anything. Um, and then to also just think about, like, what, what inspires you and what do you feel like can... Um, you can you can give to the world you know mm -hmm. like i i'm a huge fan of like artists that always have something to show you know like not just art in their house or art like all over the place like because even even i'm like that like a lot of my work is still at home i haven't really had my first solo show yet so um just thinking about what it is you want to give the world and like, if you, if you really even, um, what type of art do you want to do? Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to paint, you don't have to work on an iPad, you don't have to, you know, do all these other things that other people are doing. There's so many other ways to, um, to, to be creative now. Like mm -hmm. there's so many options. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's a good answer. Uh, a start. <laughs> First step, start. <laughs> start. And, and that's a great answer. I love that answer in that, you know, draw what you like. Think about what you like to draw and start with that. And uh, then you start uh, looking for tips on how to better draw that thing, that that whatever it is that you're drawing, whatever it is you're interested in. Uh, there's lots of techniques. There's lots of t um, uh, mediums and, uh, and ways to draw similar things that uh, artists have found their way the way, thing that works for them and right now like i just added this technique to this uh uh skirt of uh hey Ru, and i started just like adding doing the eraser and somehow i got a little bit of texture there and i like it you know it's a nice little detail thank you peg and so there it is just like uh just start uh, drawing and then when you see the drawing come come out you start at making adjustments and before you know it, you're going to be a pro sitting out here in Adobe Live. That's right, with the pros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and Maggie says, uh, that's my niece, Team Shannon. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's my Aunt Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you're welcome, uh, Nivaldo. And uh, Peg says, nice details. Thank you, thank you. That's what I like to do, try to find little things uh and peg also says sometimes too many layers make it hard to find what you want yeah you know it gets a little uh cumbersome but i'm okay i'm okay here we go boom I, all right so we're getting ready to switch to our final artwork real soon uh so a few more minutes uh detailing adding some details here what you're doing shannon because we're gonna switch over me, I am working on my final drawing, and as you can see, I, I am adding details. I am going in with making adjustments, and it's so simple. And one of my steps is very simple in that I use the same layer that I'm working on. I duplicate that layer 
on the duplicated layer, I turn on the multiply blend mode and I can change the layer opacity and it gives me like this, this um, second layer that I can erase from and then turn that second layer more like a shadow. And, uh, and so that's what I just did right now. And on the chat, we have Keith Cross in the house with uh, six fifths. <laughs> he got six fists going up in the chat. And so who did you say that is? Who is that? My father. <laughs> yes, that is uh, Keith. Mm -hmm. Keith Cross, uh, illustrator and artist, writer, comic book creator, um, il uh, uh, all-around artist. He draws and um, shares his uh, passion for art. So check him out. Keep Cross in the house. All right. I'm getting close to being done with this piece. I'm going to add a little bit more red. I'm going to add a red. You know, there we go. Like that. Boom. Hmm. Maybe it should be yellow. If it was yellow, let me go back. Let me see. Where is it? Right here. Let's make it yellow because I just thought of something else. So getting getting ready to wrap it up here and show you guys the final piece here. Got it. Let's go with that. Mm-hmm. Let's go like this. Boom. Make us uh sometimes I use the lasso tool to select an area. That's what I want to shade in. Uh, opacity is a good layering technique. That's right, Peg. That's right. Uh, hey, Shannon, Midway in the house. B. Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Is that somebody you know? Yes, that's my aunt. <laughs> Everybody is here. The whole family is here. Oh, no, that's so sweet. Yay. They came to support. That's right. That's right. But you guys all got to vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> What? All right. That's going to be a tough competition today. All right. So I got to come on in. All right. So my technique is very is, is easy. I like to um, draw with my colors, duplicate the selection. Again, the blend mode, multiply, turn the, demo, the opacity a little bit, get the eraser, and then I can even go in like this. Look at that. I feel like it's somehow these... Uh, the armbands look like hamburgers, but it's not a double decker burger. A uh, burger? <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the arm right there, it looks like it's a burger. It does look like a burger. <laughs> Couldn't fool me. With, with some ketchup. Definitely. Boom, boom. All right, so I got what I need here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we on YouTube. We got Maria says, "Go Shannon, Uncle Rex, Maria, and Alana." Oh. So, oh man, got my mom sent the link out. I feel like that's what's going on. All right, all right, that's good. That's good. I feel got like the... that is what's happening right now. Uh huh. Just the family. All right, I'm almost done with my guy here. Uh, duplicate, duplicate. There we go. Multiply. Turn down the opacity a little bit and just kind of erase a little bit right here. Boom, boom. How much time we got? That's it. Time time is coming That's to it. a close. Yeah, it's coming to a close. All right. Let me uh, turn off some layers. Turn on some layers. I like to stack my layers because sometimes it's easier to keep track of your layers when they're all together in one place, especially for Hey Rule the Hawk here and uh, somebody was asking uh what is the name of your piece shannon you know what i have no idea i have um, no idea i have no idea let's let's call her beauty or yeah. beauty is power or beauty is power i like that or mm, i'll find out by the time the <laughs> <laughs> video is over <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, I am hungry, Peg. That's why I'm, I'm looking at this as a as a uh, a um, hamburger. It's like, where is it going on with this burger? So yes, thank you for the details. Uh, I do have a lot of layers. Family reunion. Who makes a potato salad? Says uh, Robzilla. <laughs> oh yes. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yes. All right, so you can um, bring in your full illustration if you want. Here goes mine. I wanted to keep it simple, and then I got lost with extra details on the tree. Um, mine is uh, the power of creation. The the I want to say the black power of creation, something like that. It was a name that came to me. It's like, that's what I'm going to call it, and then I forgot it. If you got to write things down, otherwise... You mm -hmm. forget, yes. And then I wanted to finish some details on this uh, grass down here. Boom. And so let's go ahead and get Wade to start uh, to share the poll. Get a poll together for us, Wade, please. And we're going to share that poll on YouTube and on Behance. So wherever you may be, you get a chance to vote on your favorite piece while the voting is getting started, I'm still going to keep on working on my drawing because I want to add a few more details here and there. And uh, But here's the overall piece right here. And uh, look at Shannon's. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. D says, uh, D7A says, they are both awesome. Peg says, both drawings are cool. Nivaldo says, DTM, amazing. I can see the art of Shannon. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, yes, they're, they're really, really great. And one of my earlier versions of this uh, uh, female energy is I uh, had the white tattoos because uh, I wanted them to stand out and I forgot to add them in. Uh, uh, you know how it goes. You, 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 know, <laughs> you get sidetracked. And, uh, but I do plan on uh, working on this piece uh, later on this week so that I can get all the things that I wanted in there uh, as part of the drawing. Let me see what is happening. I want, there he goes, got that, got that. Uh, love this. I, I vote for Shannon, says LaRon, welcome. Uh, yes, uh, you can't find the way to vote. It's right there on the chat. Look in the chat. Waiter Cuff has added the vote. It's a straw poll link so go ahead and uh, click on it and you can go to the to the page to vote if you're on a mobile device if you're on uh, Behance or on YouTube the link is the same go ahead and start your vote Shannon's artwork or DTM's artwork of course I'm gonna vote for myself DTM's How do I artwork <laughs> You, you need to find the link. So go to uh, remember the YouTube channel you were um, the YouTube link you were sharing before. I don't know if you still yeah. have it. Yeah, that's yeah. how you'll find the link there, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you can vote. Let's see what results are. We got to get past the ads. Oh man, I got five votes, seven votes for me, three for Shannon. Yo, yo, folks, got to vote. Yeah, y'all got to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can't just be in here. Oh, Nevaldo says <laughs> I, I can't choose. And then uh, um, uh, uh, Joshua says the poll was a tie at the moment. For a moment, not long. Not for long. Come on, let me go get this here. Okay, get how do erase. I vote? And uh, so, so once you get to that uh, poll, straw poll, get past the ads and then you'll be able to see the the option this has two options dtm's artwork or and and there's a kind of it gets stuck like i'm on mobile right now and it's stuck here we go come on all right nine votes for dan and uh so I see six votes i'm looking trying to see the latest polls here 10 to 7 right now 10 okay. to 7 at the moment for dtm you guys are doing right you got to vote for DTM, of course. You know, you got to vote for this right here. <laughs> it's beautiful. Both drawings are amazing, though. You have to give it to Shannon for showing up, showing us how to put down some artwork in Adobe Fresco. How many times did you use Adobe Fresco before this time, this Not drawing? Not once. Not, Not once. once? What? Not a single time, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first time. Yeah, yeah. First time. That's great. And this is an amazing drawing. You already... Uh, have the talent, so it's just about uh, managing the tools. Robzilla says, all the family got to vote. 
<laughs> all the family got to vote. Like at this point, y'all uh, looking real unfamiliar. Uh, y'all in here. <laughs> extraordinary work from both artists thank you so much uh peg yes i lost the tattoo layer because i did it on a different character and i kind of did bring her on let me see if i can bring her all the way to the top so we can see her i had she has uh tattoos there it is look she had a tattoo right there on her arm and the shoulder um and so the colors you chose yeah thank you thank tattoos. you yeah thank you I, I, I had him black at first and then i was like ah it's kind of hard to see when i wanted a darker skin tone so it's um it ended up looking like that oh snap uh it, it, oliver says 11 to 11 and Whoa. it was it's 12 to 11 now oh my gosh the family showed out oh 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 my <laughs> goodness <laughs> oh my goodness yeah it's uh at near the end of the stream um yes uh shannon has more votes than me right now tony is asking how do i vote there's the link, the link in, the is in there yes yeah, it's in the chat it. it's in the chat oh my gosh can i vote for myself again nope i already tried <laughs> You sure okay? <laughs> she says you tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Wade, for that in my uh, for sharing and putting together that poll. Uh, Christopher Lindstrom says found it in my Creative Cloud app. Yes, on Behance. That's right. Fresco is available for PC depending on the PC that you have. Uh, if you have a, I think you have to have like an active graphics card for uh, Fresco to show up. If you have a Surface device, Fresco shows up uh, to download. It's not available for Mac, but it is available for iPad. Uh, yes, you can vote in all my browsers. I can't. <laughs> can I? Can you? <laughs> Want to vote in all your browsers? Oh, my gosh. Mm-mm. <laughs> Shannon says no. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see if I can at least vote for myself one more time. Please, I, am I going to lose? It's 16 votes for Shannon. Oh, that's it. That's it. Shannon won. 16 oh, votes. What? You have to have one. That's it. The 17 votes to 11 is no way out of it. Dang, you brought the family for real. <laughs> Keith is yelling on the chat saying, vote, mom. <laughs> and, and Tony, I guess that's your grandma. She, yes. she says, I did just now, Keith. Wow. I need to get all my family involved oh my goodness i want to thank everyone for hanging out with us for uh having a, a good time drawing on adobe fresco check the links in the description of the video you can download the sketches the sketches that we started with today they are available for download for free for you to have and to play around with and try to color make your own version of it have fun with it uh shannon and every artist that's been in the art battles dtm versus art battles has shared their work so go ahead and download it and then let us know make sure you let us know how, how about your artwork what you're working on where if you have any questions about uh, digital art make sure you follow shannon on instagram the ananda mama and uh and, so, and keith says sorry i didn't mean to yell at mommy <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keith, you're cool. We're gonna get Keith in here soon. I, I, I'm guarantee it. We yes, he's Keith. next. Mm -hmm. He's next. We're gonna bring him into the studio, and uh, and stream. Uh, Shannon, if you had one piece of advice to give an up and coming artist, we I know you. We heard you say start. Uh, but if, let's say you wanted to draw things like what you know how to draw. You like drawing people and faces. Mm -hmm. uh, what could what kind of piece of advice would you give? To an up-and-coming artist um to put yourself in those environments that would inspire you mm. that um helped me a lot when figuring out um how far i wanted to take like the the people drawings as a whole like sometimes i would just go out and just people watch look at different types of people i find myself online just looking at different types of people and just finding beauty in it all so, um, like, if you wanted to draw birds, it only makes sense that you go outside and look at some birds, right? Or you mm -hmm. go online and find some pictures of some birds or something like that. So really, really actively pursue it by putting yourself in those environments to um, allow yourself to be inspired, you know? Like, you can't just 
find what it is you want to create from staying in a shell. I mean, you can, but mm -hmm. it might be a little dark shell for a while. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great advice. Uh, be around the, that art. Be around those artists. Be around those references and inspirations. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Shannon, for hanging out with us today. Thank hey. you for coming out here and showing out with your family. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you. Robzilla, you're funny. Robzilla says, I wish I knew how to draw. Sure, go follow Robzilla. That is uh, one of the masters right there. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for hanging out. I am DTM Delta Tango Mike. This is a DTM versus art battle where I find your favorite artists. I challenge them to an art battle. They come and some of them show out and bring the whole family and they outvote me. So that's super awesome. That's super cool. Thank you, everybody. Gareth, <laughs> Robzilla, Clever Design, Tony, B. Cassandra, uh, d 7 Wade, Oliver. I'm going to try to say all your names. I'm sorry. Umicorn, Nivaldo. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you all for those who joined us on YouTube on the Adobe Live channel. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to Adobe Live. There's a lot of great art and artists every day of the week sharing their process and their inspiration. I am DTM. We'll catch you in a couple more weeks. We'll have another artist coming through. I think it's in a month. And so I, I just got a list of artists that we're going toe to toe every few weeks. So make sure you follow Delta Tango Mike to stay up to date on other live streams and other art battles. Say goodbye, everybody. Peace out.